Okay, moving on with the matrix method. In the last video, I warned you that we're going to be doing it with a three-dimensional example. I showed you what it looks like, and so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now remember, there is two ways that we can do matrix method. We can do the Gaussian elimination, where that is where we have ones on the main diagonal and zeros below it. Okay, so for reference, in this case, in my matrix method, I'm going to have three dimensions. So one on the main diagonal and zeros below it. And then whatever else that we have here, I'm just picking generic letters, and then our answers over here on the right. This is the first example that I showed you. This is the Gaussian elimination, where I'd find my last answer, and I would back substitute it to find my next answer, and I would back substitute it to find my first answer. So that's the Gaussian elimination. Or what we could do is what we just learned in the last video, the Gauss-Jordan elimination, or the RREF method. And so what that is, is not only to get the zeros below my main diagonal, but to get zeros above it as well. And then I don't have to do any of this back substitution. That just guarantees me what my answer is. Now, I'm going to encourage you to do it the RREF method, so we don't have to do any of that back substitution. But if you prefer the other method, that's fine as well. Okay, so my first thing is to go ahead and put this into an augmented matrix. So I have a 2x, negative 1y, 4z is equal to negative 3. 1x minus 2y minus 10z is equal to negative 6. A 3x plus a 0y plus 4z is equal to 7. So here is my augmented matrix. Now, when we did this in a two-dimensional example, I tried to get my 1 here on the top left, and then the 0, and then the 1, and then the 0. So I kind of did this counterclockwise motion. Now let me show you the motion that I do here. But again, if you see something that's easier, that's a different than this route, go ahead and do it, whatever is going to be the easiest that you can see at that time. So I start with my 1 in the top left corner. I get the zeros below it. Then I fill out that bottom row here, and that's exactly what would happen if you wanted to do the Gaussian elimination. The only other thing that you would have to get is the 1 after that. But I prefer the Gauss-Jordan elimination, the RREF method. So then I get my 0 up here next, then my 1, and then whichever one of these two comes next. So I start with the left column, then the bottom row, and then I work my way back up. But again, that's just my method of choice. If you see a different route that works better for you, go ahead and go for it. So what I need to do is I need to get a 1 up here on the top left. And the easiest way that I see that is I have a 1 right below it. So I'm basically just going to interchange these two rows. So I'm going to interchange row 1 and row 2. So I have 1, negative 2, negative 10, negative 6. 2, negative 1, 4, negative 3, and then my row 3 stays the same. So I've got that one checked off. Now I want to get a 0 below it. Well, anytime I want a 0, that means we eliminate something. So I'm going to compare it to a different row. Well, I'm going to compare it to row 1 because it has that 1 there, and it's going to make my multiplication a lot easier. So if I take a row 1 and I multiply it by the opposite number of what I see, which is 2, and add it to row 2, that can be replaced into my new row 2. So I'm one that has to do scratch work, so I don't do simple mistakes. If I take row 1 times negative 2, that gives me negative 2, positive 4, positive 20, and positive 12. And then I add that to my old row 2. Okay. So my row 1 stays at 1, negative 2, negative 10, negative 6. My new row 2 comes from adding these two rows. Negative 2 plus 2 gives me 0. 4 minus 1 gives me 3. 20 plus 4 gives me 24. And 12 minus 3 gives me 9. 
Now, it's probably going to be your nature to just go ahead and copy down row three, and if you wanted to do that, that's perfectly fine. But I'm actually going to try and find the zero here as well. So it means I can eliminate this scratch work here because I did what I wanted to do out of it. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to now look at this row. And so to get rid of that row, I need to multiply it by the opposite of row 1. So I'm going to take my row 1 times negative 3 and add it to row 3, and that's going to be my new row 3. So my scratch work, 1 times negative 3 gives me negative 3. Negative 2 times negative 3 gives me 6. Negative 10 times negative 3 gives me 30. And negative 6 times negative 3 gives me 18. Combine those two rows, and that becomes my new row 3. So negative 3 plus 3 gives me 0. 6 plus 0 gives me 6. 30 plus 4 gives me 34. And 18 plus 7 gives me 25. Now, it might look like we did a little bit of damage because we actually lost a 0 here where we wanted it to be. But that's okay because we'll just fix it here at a later time. Okay. So my next goal is to get a 0 here, so to make this 6 into a 0. Anytime we want to make things into a 0, we compare it to a different row. Now, it might seem like I can compare it to row 1, but if I use row 1 over here, I would actually lose this 0. So I cannot multiply row 1 by a number to get me my 6 to become a 0. So I'm going to have to do a row 2. Since I have zeros, since I have zeros in both of those places, I'm not going to lose the 0 that I have there. Okay, so if I take row 2, now looking at this 3 and 6 here, if I take 3 and if I multiply it by a negative 2, that gives me negative 6, and so that's going to cancel. And then I'm going to add that to row 3, and that's going to become my new row 3. Okay, so I'm going to take my row 2 and multiply it by negative 2. I'm going to do that scratch work down here. 0 times negative 2 gives me 0. 3 times negative 2 gives me negative 6. 24 times negative 2 gives me negative 48. And 9 times negative 2 gives me negative 18. So now I need to add those two things there. So my row 1 stays. My row 2 stays, and my row 3 becomes 0. 6 minus 6 gives me 0. 34 minus 48 gives me negative 14. And 25 minus 18 gives me 7. Okay, so if I look at my path here, I've done what I want. Now, my next step is to get a 1 where that answer is there, where that number is there. So I want to get a 1 where this number is here. The easiest way to get a 1 is just to divide that whole row by something. So I'm going to take row 3, and I'm going to divide it by negative 14, and that's going to become my new row 3. So row 1 stays the same. Row 2 stays the same, and row 3, negative 14 divided by negative 14 gives me 1. 7 divided by negative 14 gives me 1 half. Again, I have a fraction here. That's my answer. I cannot switch that up. And so now I've almost hit the Gaussian elimination. If you wanted to stop close to here, basically you'd, all you'd have to do is switch this 3 into a 1 by multiplying or dividing that row by a 3, and then you could back substitute it all the way up. But I think we can do better than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep following my path. So my choice next is to get a 0 right above that last 1 that we found. Okay, so I need to get a 0 here. Well, the way to do that is compare it to a different row because I want to eliminate something. Again, if I compared it to row 1, I would lose this 0 here, which I can't do. So I'm going to have to compare it to row 3. So I take my row 3, and I'm looking at this number. If I multiply that by a negative 24, 
and add it to row two, that should give me the row two that I want. That should give me a one, or that should give me a zero where this 24 is. So my row one stays the same. My row three stays the same. And now I'm going to do my scratch work. Row three times negative 24. So zero, zero, negative 24, and negative 24 times negative one half is positive 12. So if I add these two, that gives me zero. Three plus zero gives me three. 24 minus 24 gives me zero. And nine plus 12 gives me a 21. Okay. So now my next step is to get rid of this 3 and make it a 1. The easiest way to make things 1 is to divide that row by whatever I'm trying to get rid of. So I take my row 2 and I divide it by 3. That becomes my new row 2. So row 1 stays. Row 3 stays. And row 2 becomes 0. 1, 0, and 21 divided by 3 gives me 7. So I've got two of my answers here. This tells me that my y value is 7, and my z value is negative 1 half. Okay, so I've got this one, and now I have my last two to get the zeros up above. You can do these in any order. I haven't really found them to be a preferred method to do one over the other. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and make this 2 into a 0 next. So I'm going to do that by comparing it with row 2, because that's the only option I have at this point. So I take row 2 and I multiply it by 2, add that to row 1, replace it with row 1. So if I take row 2 and multiply it by 2, that gives me 0, 2, 0, 14. And then if I add those two rows, that gives me 1, 0, negative 10, and 6 minus, or 14 minus 6 gives me 8. Row 2 stays the same because I have my answer for that. Row 3 stays the same because I have my answer for that. Okay. My last thing here is to get rid of this negative 10 by comparing it to row 3. So I take row 3 and I multiply it by 10, add it to row 1, and put it back into row 1. So my scratch work of row 3 times 10 gives me 0, 0, 10, negative 1 half times 10 is negative 5. And then if I add those two rows, I have 1, 0, negative 10 plus 10 gives me 0, 8 minus 5 gives me 3, and then everything else is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. And so if I were to put this back into a equation format, I would have x is equal to 3, y is equal to 7, and z is equal to negative 1 half. Or if I wanted to put this in ordered triple format, I have the answer of 3, 7, negative 1 half. Okay, at this point you're probably questioning, well, why is this a better method? Um, I'm not going to say that it's necessarily a better method, but I'm going to show you why it's very useful in the next video.